Hi everyone, welcome. This is Bibi Lorenzetti. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a yoga teacher and a birth doula and a postpartum IU doula. I also uh, am a health coach and do offer um, support to uh, postpartum recovering women and for baby nutrition. So you can find all kinds of videos on my channel uh, in regards to yoga, philosophy and asana, uh, baby food, regular nutrition, postpartum nutrition, and uh, support for uh, the journey of pregnancy and birth. So I hope that you take some time to roam around and see what works for you. Um, and please always do feel free to leave comments in the notes so that I can continue to provide you with content that might be useful for you. So today I wanted to take a little bit of time to speak about the essence of the practice of Ashtanga yoga. There's uh, a lot out there and uh, the main thing that you see is the physicality of the Ashtanga practice. But if you break down the word Ashtanga, you have two words, Ashta and Anga. Ashta is eight and Anga is limb. So Ashtanga yoga is the practice of the eight limbs of yoga. What are the eight limbs of yoga? Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi. Right, so Asana is the third one of the eight limbs. But because it is the thing that we can relate to the most, because we all have a body uh, that might function in different ways and to different rates of uh, capability, but we all can relate to the physicality of having a body and moving it in space. So this is the simplest form for us as humans to experience um, yoga. Right, we begin by cleansing um, the body, and through the as through the breath, uh, in conjunction with the asana, and with a steady attention of the mind, and in that way, be we begin to take uh, practice pratyahara, which is taking the the attention of the senses inwards instead of having them continuously grasp at outer things that might catch our attention through all these different sensorial. Um, parts of the body that we have. So through the, the vessel of asana, we are engaging the body and through the vessel of uh, pranayama or breathing, we are engaging the breath and then we're engaging the mind on the rhythm of the breath. And so we begin, it's kind of like then in that sense, the asana becomes this trampoline into the inner world that is within, um, beyond the limits of our skin, right? We begin to really fine tune um, to all the different feelings and experiences within the body, different feelings and experiences within the mind, right? Um, and we begin to cleanse at a very deep level because each asana is kind of like you can Im imagine it as a very specific circuit. Um, so whenever you're placing your body in a specific shape, you're creating access to specific little nadis or channels within the body. And by forcing the breath in, in a very conscious and um, engaged way, you are bringing the prana into those specific areas right of the body and so by doing that you're bringing circulation where there might have been stagnation and therefore releasing and in that sense then not only do you experience flexibility physically but you're also uh, allowing for more communication between the different parts of the body and more fluidity within within uh, the nervous system and therefore for your um reaction towards what's coming at you right so your emotional experience of life um so this is like a whole other topic but i just wanted to give you a general overview of it because it involves many other um concepts that i'm not gonna dive into right now because this is just about the essence of yoga right so we begin with asana and then with asana we create this type of very focused concentration or dharana which involves pratyahara which is taking the senses inwards right taking the attention instead of moving outwards redirecting it inwards um, through pranayama right and once we're able to sustain that attention for a long period of time and then we no longer have to make an effort at keeping the attention we enter into what's called dhyana which is a state of uh, spontaneous uh, pure consciousness right where we're not trying to we're not using an object to put our attention and focus on but it's just 
concentration in itself. We are we become one with it, and then we reach the state of samadhi, right, where we where we lose the um, kind of the, the the concept of self as this, right, and we experience the the true essence of the self, the 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 purusha, right, uh, beyond action, beyond form, um, that is the same within all of us. So. This is a very big concept, and I'm throwing it at you in just a few moments. So it's very, um, it's a very unsophisticated and superficial explanation. But I wanted you to kind of have an idea and an overview of what you're doing when you're practicing asana. So if you think about yoga in this way, it's not so much about what kinds of postures you're doing and how many of them you're doing, but it's about even if you're practicing one posture. Um, how is your presence in that posture? Are you firmly established in your breath? Are you firmly established in the attention to the breath? Are you firm, firmly established into realizing what the sensations in the body are? Are you present in short? That's what I'm asking pretty much, right? Um, and then in that, that's the concept of swadhyaya, which is one of the niyamas, right? Yama niyama, the first two limbs, which have five there's five yamas and five niyamas, um, but the swadhyaya is one that I particularly like because I think the practice of Ashtanga yoga, the physical practice of Ashtanga yoga done in a Mysore style um, way allows for very deep introspection and because of the silence and because of the repetition, you're able to really see yourself day in and day out. Again, it doesn't matter how many poses you're doing, but just the presence and the quality in the postures that you are practicing is what will allow for you to really begin to learn about your mind and how your body reacts to the states and to the um, either wavering or unwavering state of the mind. Right? You begin to really see uh, the content that your mind is constantly creating, and you begin to, over time, create a little space between what the content that's being formed is and your emotional attachment and reaction to it. There's a little space that begins to happen, and that space continues to become greater and greater as you continue to practice, not the amounts of series, but the amount of focus presence, attention, dedication, devotion in each asana that you might be practicing. So even if all that you are practicing is sun salutation A with maybe a trikonasana in there and a finishing breath, the attention and the dedication and the devotion that you put into that practice is what's going to allow for you to really find this deep transformative um, benefit of Swadhyaya of self observation, self study through practice. Um, of course, Swadhyaya also includes um, reading text and uh, you know applying your your mind to different studies. But I'm just going to be focusing today on how this uh, few terms uh, apply to the asana practice, and that it can be any form of asana practice. It does not need to be a long format of Ashtanga Yoga. It can literally just be any parts of it, right? Um, so Swadhyaya, self-observation, which requires full presence. And then whatever you observe from yourself, adding to that a little bit of um, doubting or questioning, right? Not giving for granted what you're given and what you're practicing, but constantly having this um, attitude of continuing to take the material as if it was new when you're stepping on the mat and continuing to observe how you continue to change in relationship to that material. And as you continue to evolve and move through the different stages of life, uh, you might notice that there's less need or less fire, or at some point there's more fire and more need. And just observing it, taking note of it, and seeing how you can continue to use the practice to serve you in life. Because just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna reminds us, uh, Sorry, our, uh, yeah, Krishna reminds Arjuna, the duty, our duty is to be here now and to and to lead whatever. If we're a family man, to be family man. If we're a student, to be a student. Um, whatever it might. To, if we're a grandparent, to or we're in that stage of life where we're beginning to retreat, to prioritize that. Whatever stage of life you are, there's a specific duty, and so whatever that might be, it takes a lot of self-observation, honest. Um, which is another <laughs> niyama, um, 
a, a certain amount satya, a certain amount of honesty um, and truth in order to see ourselves where we are and apply or adapt the practice to suit the needs of the current state we're in. And that might come with a little bit of friction, a little bit of resistance, but Again, because we've learned about pratyahara, about retreating, about creating that space between what is happening in our minds, our reaction, our emotional reaction to it, and then the true experience of who we are, right? That space continues to widen. So we want to remember that at any point when their transformation or change happens, that we are the observer of that change. We are not the change itself. We are not what is happening to us. But we are beyond that. And so if we can begin to use practice to, to experience um, life in that way, uh, from a deep state of inner observation, then we can begin to suffer a little less, right? And to really use the practice in this intelligent and, and um, forever growing way, right? Then it's a relationship that can be a lifelong uh, relationship, not just until our body is able to. Um, you know, to, to bend and move in a certain way, but it sustains us forever. But it requires a little bit of honesty from our part, a little bit of courage, a little bit of vulnerability from our part. Okay, so swadhyaya, uh, we talked about um, satya briefly, truthfulness and honesty towards ourselves so that we don't harm ourselves, which is ahimsa is harming. So in order to practice himsa, which is non-harming, we have to be honest with ourselves, right? We have to have this introspection, the swadhyaya. And in order to do that, I'm going to throw out there another uh, word, which is tapas, which is the first of the niyamas, right? So I'm going back and forth between yamas and niyamas. I'll do another video talking about each one in order, but for the purpose of this uh, this video talking about the essence of yoga, there's a few terminologies that I find are very key and important to kind of understand, grasp, and, and see how they play out for you. So um, honesty, self-introspection, we jump to ahimsa, uh, which is non-harming, right? Uh, so practicing in a way that is not harming us, but is keeping us, um, we're, we're putting enough um, devotion and dedication to, to being truthful and to questioning and to studying so that we don't create harm. We actually decrease the amount of harm and suffering um, by using practice intelligently. And so this other concept of tapas, which is um, one of the niyamas, tapas is discipline, it is heat, it is um, this heat created by friction, right? So discipline uh, requires a certain type of friction. Attention is friction. We're, we're creating heat by placing our attention firmly onto one place. We're put, exerting our willpower, willpower uh, to doing something that is positive for us, right? So the practice of Ashtanga Yoga requires a lot of discipline, the showing up every day with an open, honest, uh, truthful, questioning um, inwardly observing, uh, non-harming presence requires a certain amount of discipline and willingness to put yourself there. Then you create the other side of uh, tapas is the heat, right? Then when you're practicing in this way, you are creating this inner heat that is both physical, right, which uh, you sweat, and the sweat allows for, uh, it's a byproduct of creating heat and allowing for toxins that are st have been stuck in the body in these little channels that we were talking about. They're being brought up towards the, the exiting um, locations of the body, right, the skin, um, or, you know, stools in the form of that. <laughs> um, so the mucus, right, whatever uh, exit they might find, whatever, wherever the imbalance is, we're creating enough heat to dissolve that and to circulate it around the body, loosen it and circulate it out of our system to leave that space, right? And as we begin to clean, clean the body in that way, we begin to experience more clarity in the mind. So if you're constipated, if you're, um, you know, you have a clogged um, sinus, or if you have pain in your limbs or in your joints, that's where your attention is going to go. However, the, the discomfort is manifesting in the physical body, it's going to create uh, a series of, of um, 
reactions in the body that are going to take all of your energy. And it's all energy that you could be taking inwards towards the observation, towards meditation, towards inner self, right? And towards doing your duty. So the physicality of the practice with this tapas, with this intention, with this heat, with this discipline is meant to also liberate your body from all these um, discomforts and all these diseases in the body. So that then it can move into the mind and begin to clean, clear out the mind. And in that we also have mudras and, um, you know, specific places uh, where we place the body, the the mind, the eyes to focus the attention as well, so that we do uh, begin to cleanse the uh, the content or the the way that the mind reacts, uh, so that we can get a little more peace of mind, a little bit more clarity, and that mainly happens by cleansing the nervous system and allowing for things to kind of settle so the body can move away from a rajasic or a reactive and overreactive uh, mind into a more of a or or a tamasic mind which is like a bogged down very heavy very um, um, no other word is coming right now but yeah very bogged down very uh, slow kind of depressed uh, mind into a more sattvic, which is light, which is um, free, which is spacious, right? Um, state of mind. Uh, so, so we have that movement away from those uh, polarities. And also it's just the experience of not being one or the other, but being fluid between the two, right? So that also that ability to create space from that allows us to be more in the center, more less black and white, more just gray. So that's, the essence of yoga. We practice asana with conscious pranayama to begin to move the attention inwards, take the senses from moving outwards, seeking for reactions to what's external, to more inward focusing so that we can experience deep concentration, which is dharana, which eventually will turn into dhyana, which is attention that is just pure consciousness without an object so that we can eventually experience samadhi which is a state of full union right Um, and in order to do that we have to apply to our asana practice swadhyaya which is very deep uh, observation um, just in short uh, shout uh, Satya, which is uh, truthfulness and honesty. Ahimsa, which is non-harming, so practicing harmlessness towards ourselves and um, in the way that we practice and the way we're honest. And tapas, discipline, right? And heat. So all of these elements are really important for, for you to, to kind of play around with and find in your practice so that the practice serves a higher purpose than just physical. I hope this video hasn't made you even more confused and if it has then great it's created an opportunity to have doubt and questioning and for you to go out there and try to find more answers um i am learning how to do this on youtube so please bear with me as i continue to get better at speaking through a screen and trying to envision i'm actually speaking to someone um but i do this uh in my retreats and in my workshops so i really hope that uh, one of these days you are able to join me on one of these retreats or workshops and uh and i can help you on a real one-on-one um interaction and until then uh, please feel free to leave comments ask me questions you can always find me on my website bblorenzetti.com there's a link below uh, and you can email me through there uh, to establish a relationship and ask me so that I can put out more videos that will continue to serve you uh, and if you're looking for birth uh, or doula services postpartum services you can follow me at um birthwithbb.com, which is also down here in the comments. And please, the way that you can support me and continuing to support you is by subscribing to my channel and sharing it with other people. So by all means, please click the subscribe button and spread the word about, you know, if you find any of the videos helpful, send them to someone that you know and, and, and help me in that way. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day.